So in the last video, we looked at the the start of the Russian history with Alexander II, and now we're going to have a look at really his his main point, his main policy throughout his entire life, and this was the emancipation of the serfs. Okay, so we're going to have a look at how this was done. We're going to have a look at the Alexander's Edict of 1861, and then we're going to analyse whether or not it was very good or not. Okay, so the Crimean War ended in March of 1856, and then after this, Alexander set up a committee to examine emancipation. So what this little bit here shows that his his priority was with the war. So his priority was with the Crimean War. And that's rightly so, effectively, what was with the Crimean War. Okay. That was his first issue that he's going to get done. And then as soon as he did that in 1856, we see him set up the a committee to examine emancipation. In 1858 and 1859, he toured the country delivering pro-emancipation speeches. So he was sort of building society to the idea. So he was building society to the idea of emancipation. So he, uh, yeah, building society. To the idea of emancipation. Emancipation. Okay, and obviously provincial nobles failed to agree on measures of emancipation. This is because, as we looked in the last video, uh, provincial nobles actually had a lot of their money come from the serfs. So if Alexander was to get rid of the serfs, then that takes away some of their money. And if there's one thing that people don't like, it's their money being taken away from them. Okay, so... The emancipation of the serfs was proclaimed in Alexander's Edict of 1861, okay? However, it was, we call it, we say it was an, almost an emancipation proclamation. However, there were some catches to this, to this. Just like Lincoln's during the Civil War in America, there were catches to the emancipation proclamation that Alexander uh, declared at this point. So, this only applied to privately owned serfs. State serfs would receive their freedom in 1866. So, the Edict of 1861 didn't, wasn't complete. So, it was an incomplete emancipation. So, it was an incomplete emancipation. An incomplete emancipation. Okay. So, with that being said, let's actually have a look at what the edict said, and then we're going to have a look at a few problems and its sort of impact that it had on uh, Russian society. Okay, so it had a number of terms. The serfs were declared free and could marry who they choose, own property, set up business and travel and enjoy legal rights. So, this just means freedom. They had freedom. Serfs were given their own cottage and allotment of land. So it was almost like housing for the serfs. Landlords were granted government bonds as compensation. So this was a sort of way to sort of get the nobles on side. Since nobles are going to be losing out from this, it should be made clear that what they wanted to do was they wanted to, they, they gave them money so that they gave them money so that they would have um, compensation. Serves were required to make 49 annual redemption payments for the land that they were given. Okay, And landowners were allowed to retain meadows, pasture, woodland and personal land. And like I said, the labour service, the Obruk, uh, remained for a two-year period. Okay, So this was... By all measures, uh, a, a step in the right direction. So this is all a step in the right direction. In the right direction. Okay. So how was it received? So what was the sort of significance of it? Okay. So enterprising peasants could buy up land, increase output 
invest and make money. This is always good for the economy. So good for the economy. And if we remember in the last video, uh, Russia had a 59 million uh, ruble debt. So a good economy would be uh, very helpful for, for Alexander at this point. Okay, those prepared to sell land could move to more industrialized cities. So this is a very important point. If serfdom had continued, then a huge amount of the population wouldn't be allowed to move into industrialized cities. So there would be a, a, a decrease in industrialization. So in this area, we have people, peasants and uh, former serfs moving to industrialized cities and increasing industrial output. Okay, increasing industrial output, which, ooh, output, which also is good for the economy. Okay, and then landowners could use compensation to redeem debts and invest in industrial enterprises. Again, all these things are just good for the economy. Okay good for the economy at this time in the rest of the world and especially the rest of Europe and Britain specifically we see the industrial revolution taking shape in this hundred year period uh, in the 1800s okay and if serfdom had continued then this would have this would have put Russia behind even more than it already was so with the ending of serfdom and people landowners being able to invest in industrial enterprises okay and from redeemed debts and also from the serfs that are able to move to industrialized cities and work in industry we can see Russia sort of expand into its own industrial revolution and catch up behind the rest of the world but there were obviously problems with the edict since the nothing is ever perfect so here is a little list of them here we're gonna go through them so land allocations varied so there were some places that were inefficient uh, insufficient to live on and this really comes down to the fact that you know it, it can't with the amount of serfs that were that were freed the land allocated to them all was um it was it was like I said varied. There were some people benefit. Some people got a lot of good things, and some people didn't. Okay. The actual rights of peasants only remained theoretical. So this is an interesting point. Okay. So whilst this was legally, so ooh, so whilst legal rights existed, so whilst legal rights, legal rights. Uh, existed the actual uh, the the reality of these rights were were more questionable so in it, the reality the reality of these rights were more more questionable Okay, so that's what we can see here. And there was also the redemption payments that the edict um, proposed led to unrest. So we just had people, so this is just an example of people not liking the idea. Land prices sometimes fixed upon market value. So that also means that some people won't be able to afford the, the land that they, that they now uh, have to pay for. So, so some people can't afford it. So some people cannot afford it. Okay. Um, some former serfs struggled to make a living without the use of additional land. Okay. Serfs lost their landlord's protection. So there are some cases where serfdom actually benefited the serfs. Okay. There was actually benefits for the serfs. Um, Peasants were resentful, and as a result of uh, resentful peasants, of people not enjoying this new uh, this new policy, there were six hundred forty seven peasant riots within four months. Okay, so a lot of these, so some of these can be chalked up as actual problems with the edict itself, 
problems that maybe couldn't have been um, foreseen or maybe that just that couldn't have been avoided and there are other problems that were just because people didn't like them so so some some were what i'd call logistical problems logistical problems and then some were just people who don't like it people who hate it i'll say people who hate it so altogether the emancipation of the serfs really oh my lord the emancipation of the serfs really served as the uh, as a stepping stone for alexander it was his it was his major it was his major landmark policy and it did happen in 1861 partially in 1861 it wasn't a complete emancipation and it did have a number of good points that helped stimulate the economy and then obviously people disliked it